What's up, you two friends and family? This is your buddy, Israel Sap, coming at you today with something a little different than coins. Um, I thought I'd pop a little video in and show y'all a little something. Um, <laughs> uh, show you, um, not just some of the deer I killed, but um, show you some of the stuff I do. Like, um, I do my own European mounts. Um, Years ago, I um, started with this little fellow right here. Right here. Let's name the whole country. I started with this one. And um, I picked up on it pretty good. And um, he's nothing big. I mean, for around here, he's like an average deer. He, he's a little eight point. But the reason why I took him out was he has a bad... We have a bad genetic here where they like to come all the way together. And they almost touch. I have one... I actually have two in the freezer from last year that um, I got the European mount that's bigger than these. But um, then I have another one. But uh, I got a bunch of them. But uh, this little fella right here was the first one I ever did. He was a mean little sucker. and uh, Like I say, this is a basket rack trying to get this genetic out. Um, but um, yeah, I'm just going to show you. Like woodwork wise, uh, this right here was actually gonna be uh um it was part of a staircase some stairs that i was building and uh was the extra piece i had left over you can see the seam right put this down Turn him upside down you can see the, the seam from this in here but to the naked eye people don't know nothing about cabinets or nothing you never catch it but to get this look right here i love airheads i was like you know what i'm gonna make me airhead black so I need to unscrew him back off, but, um, what I did is, anyway, this is an inch and a half, uh, those inch and a half steppings, but what I did with this one right here is, um, I took, I dropped me an airhead, which would look like this right here. Let me turn it back to the back, because that, that, that'll show better. Um, I took, and I made me a template. I can't draw good. I can draw halfway decent on certain things, so I dropped me an airhead, and all I needed was half of it because you know you go even you go you know like like here you can see where i split my difference i can't remember how wide this is i think this is 12 inches 12 and a quarter 12 and a half 13 something like that but anyway you take 12 have 12 6 boom down the middle take your template half flip it half and then um i took went to the um the, the band saw cut around the edges cut it out with the band saw and I cut it pretty close. The reason why I cut it close is because I wanted to give it the rustic look. Um, I wanted it to look like it was in the rough. So I barely bumped it in certain places with the with the with the wall sander because I wanted to keep it in the rough and, and leave the saw marks in it. But um, I did that. They come out pretty. And um, I, and anyway, what I mean by in the rough. And it also left the saw marks here, which is on the outside, where I took a OG. Um, it was actually a Roman OG edge. And um, had I not done it, it looked just like this plain. But I took the Roman OG and I jacked it up instead of jacking it down. And I just went over and I built the edges of it and made it look 3D. So the light's not really picking it up that well. You can see it on the sides over here. And you can see where I glazed it a little darker on the edges. But, um, yeah, I do my own European mounts. I actually have a bunch of people that, uh, want me to start doing theirs. And I've done them for a lot of people. And it just got where it was killing my hunting season. I wasn't, I had so much work, it was unreal. So this year I'm thinking about going back and doing it over again. Because there's people in 94 counties and that don't do as good as work as I do they take and um they can't get their natural look down pat so they paint it or either um they rush it and on the basis of their horns and stuff they get the um the activator um activator um and it uh it turned horns and then they come back over it with stain and you can see it and uh, about a year down the road my cousin's got some and um these I just washed these off. They had dust on them, so they're shining back up, pretty and white. Actually, these are some of the first ones I ever did. 
But um, this little six point I killed years ago. You see right there where he got, got messed up coming out of his velvet there. Cool little black, black line. I shot him in 17 degree temperatures. Big old noggin on the deer. But um, on this oak uh, piece right here, it was also staring too. Um, I just done it with a um, uh, mahogany glaze. A light mahogany glaze. No, I, no, I didn't. No, no, no. This is, uh, that one was the mahogany. This is the golden oak. And then I went around it with a, uh, a dark walnut um, glaze edge on it. Same thing. It's just a little bigger because the skull is bigger. Um, piece. Then the arrowhead. Come back around again with my router. Uh, lowered it. This time, you know, I took it to the wall center and bumped it. Got it good and smooth all the way around. So the glaze edge on it. And that's what it looks like. And I had the pedestals over here that goes behind them on the pedestal mount. You can hang, hang them on the wall or you can put them on a pedestal. So it's just a piece of wood that goes underneath it, jacks it up like this. And you dare be sitting however you want to. These are no trophies, no big trophies. So um, I just set them to the side, you know. Um, back then, you know, back in my younger days or whatever they was, um, and they still a trophy to me. Each deer has a good meaning to it, you know, it has a storyline. That's what I like, you know. And I go deer hunt and I see deer, I let these walk like this a lot <laughs> and um, just watch them, you know, learn them. I'll show you guys how to do it yourself, European mount. And I'm telling you, I started just knowing, you know, the basics of. Just how, how, you know, a school is and muscle and stuff. And I watched one one guy do it years and years and years ago. And after I watched him do it, I picked up on it and went with it. But one thing you really don't want, my cousin um, had one. I wasn't doing his work because uh, I wanted to hunt. And um, he got one back from last year. And oh my goodness, it's got meat all on the back back here. It's got part of the brain still in it. I mean... Uh, you don't want that. I mean, you know, if nothing else, I mean, you, you don't send out a product like that. I mean, you you just don't do that. I mean, that, that'll come back to stink in your house. You know, you walk by it, it'll have an odor. And, yeah, I'm going to have to fix that one for him. And it was spray painted. But, um, yeah. Now, this guy right here, I just took this. Let me take him off of here. This right here is something I was piddling around with. Took the arrowhead, and um, this is a piece of actually a piece of oak plywood, <laughs> just old piece of plywood, three quarter inch, and uh, I did the same thing, but I made me a color this time. I call this um, it's actually cherry. It's cherry stained on the outside. Like I say, I done the cut out, went to the wall sander, bumped it on the wall sander. Uh, the, top grooves in here I had to do by hand which don't take long if you know what you're doing but um I ran around it with OG again and put that edge on it and it looks sweet right there but on the color uh color arts makes color um stain you can see there's a circle here and I'll show you why in just a second but um I call this my blue cherry color and it's actually one of the the um the ugliest ones I've ever done the other ones I got are really, really pretty. I make them now where they, they show reds more in here. And the blues are, are more glossy and stuff. But, um, for all this reason, you know, just bored sometimes on my lunchtime at, uh, at work. So I piddle with it. And uh, this deer right here is going to be getting mounted at the time. It's still now. <laughs> $600 to get a deer mounted is not cheap. I picked this little thing up at the auction. You, I think they sell them in Walmart and stuff like that. You can buy them. It's metal. I was like, hmm. I got it for a buck. I was like, well, my deer is just sitting there. It's going to get stuffed. I'll just slap him on there and spray paint it white and let him sit there until I can get another one, which it really wasn't the money ordeal. This deer, when I shot him, he sat in the freezer for two years, and his cape went bad. And um, so I got to get me another cape to put him on but um he's old swamp buck come out the river i grunted him up but i let him sit on there like that right there and i just set it there i mean nobody it's not really 
nothing. It's not my showroom stuff, but um, he's a good book. Like I say, come out swamp. He uh, I wish I'd have scored him while he was still green. He's uh, 18 inches inside. He's real heavy, real heavy horned deer. Good mass on him. Um, his time length ain't as long as I like them to be, but um, he has 20 uh, 20 and an eighth inch main beams. Um, uh, 18 and an eighth inside spread. At your widest point, you can go from here. It's actually the same from here to here as it is from from here to here. So, um, but yeah, I put I put him on that, but it's just a little project I done and hadn't finished. But uh, just thought I'd show you guys some of that. And if you guys ever need uh, some pointers on how to do that, if you want to do it yourself, let, let me know and uh, I'll get with you and show you how to do some of that stuff. And if you want some um, some of these some of these little arrowhead plaques I make, you know, I'll shoot you a template and you start making your own or show you how to make your own. Um, I've done uh, I've done these for people. Like I said, they need to dry. This was my first one. And you can tell right here on this one where I messed up. I, I made this snout hole up. Well, where it comes in right here a little too big. It needed to be a little bit narrower. Because uh, I pick them pretty good. I don't like leaving nothing at all inside there. And trust me, they have a lot inside there. But um, I'll show you all some of my, my better ones that I've done. Like I said, these are the first two I've ever did in my life. And... Um, but now when it comes back to like a cat mount, like see the heat, this one right here, he was sawed off. He was sawed off to be mounted. So you can see how his rack was sawed. What I done with it is uh, um, I just took and put a piece of camouflage over his cap right here. And um, but yeah, I'll show you how to do some cool cat mounts too. Like when you just saw the horns off of the cap. Instead of putting the thing you can buy on there or whatever, I have some with uh, the Georges in the middle, uh, the Bulldogs and Flames and all kind of stuff. I'll show sure you guys some cool stuff, man. But uh, if y'all need anything like this, just hit me up, let me know. And um, I got some other cool things coming uh, real soon, too. There's going to be some rings. If you guys want any kind of rings, clad, uh, some clad rings like your state ring. Uh, Morgan and Peace, which our buddy, good buddy Ken Rhodes makes rings. I don't know if he does quite.